Hello, say Chalat. Do you know what is the difference between desiring and wanting? When you look at the surface, these words seem to be the same thing. But there is a subtle difference that's going to help you to achieve some of the most important life goals that you have. And to illustrate this difference, which is a little bit of a different type of a conversation, more philosophical, that we have in our channel, let's think of a simple example. Imagine that I love chocolate. At the same time, I have nut allergy. And somebody offers me a delicious chocolate but has nuts inside of this chocolate. So when I see that chocolate, it ignites my desire. I see the chocolate, I, I smell the chocolate, so I have desire. But deep inside, I don't want to suffer the consequences of eating something that has nuts because I know it's going to cause me the allergy. So what does it mean to say, I wish, but I don't want? So instead of me complaining that I can't eat the chocolate because I have the allergy, poor me, I just say, I prefer to not eat. And this is not just a play of words. I'm not purely exchanging I can't for I don't want to. What I'm doing here, I'm reinforcing my personal values. I'm strengthening my real intention. I'm, I'm training my resistance. Words are really important. Aldous Huxley said that words are like threads for which we use to weave our own reality. Why is it so important for us to be understanding the subtle difference between wishing and wanting? It is because when we do this, we bring into our reality the distinction between the desire by impulse and the wanting as a rational force. The impulsive desire is an obstacle that exists between you and the object, the object that is the source of desire. So in the case of the chocolate, the chocolate is the source of satisfaction and the desire is what separates the chocolate lover from the desire, the satisfaction that they get by eating that chocolate. If they eat, the desire is fulfilled. That is why we say that possession kills desire. In this example, as much as I like chocolate, I have my own health as one of my highest values. So I have the intention to be protecting my own health despite all the temptations that I'm going through. So when I see that chocolate that has the nuts, as much as I have the desire to eat it, I resist. Because I know that deep inside what I really want to preserve are my personal values, my health. If I would be an irrational animal, or if I would be, if I would be the type of person who does not value my own, my own health, I would have eaten the chocolate even though that would be the consequences that these nuts would bring to me. But, since I am an intelligent creature, and I'm able to understand the consequences of my own choices, then I can evaluate if I really want, rationally speaking, to eat that chocolate, and then have the consequences of the allergy. Now, it is very clear to me that now, using my rational thought, ultimately, I do not want to. My, my, my rational desire says that the answer to the question, do you want to have this chocolate, obviously is no, I do not want. I desire, I wish for, but I don't want to. See, that is so easy now to understand all of this by changing the I can't, I can't eat that chocolate for a genuine, sincere and wiser, I don't want to eat that chocolate. This choice of words seems very subtle, but it can mean so much. It can be the difference between having a life of frustrations and instead of that having an existence based in choices, real choices that take me to my real goals, which is aligned to the goals that are respecting my true high values. Because when I say I can't, I'm just feeling sorry for myself. Maybe Maybe even I want other people to be feeling sorry for me as a way for me to get attention. Oh, oh, I, I, I really wish for, but I can't, I can't. Now, when I say I don't want to, or I'd rather not to, I'm showing that I have the determination to overcome my impulsive desires. Take conscious decisions based on what you really, really want. The most important point of our conversation is to have this internal peace that you can have by investing in conscious decision making. And to decide consciously, we have to balance the satisfaction of our desires with the 
likely consequences. And this is so important because the life of the person who does not have this conscious decision making can have so many troubles. Without balance between desire and wanting, it might seem that we are having a lot of incoherence in our life and this lack of balance will lead you to suffering. It's like a car with one of the axes broken and then starts to run in circles without ever moving ahead, without ever getting to a final destination. See that the cause of the lack of balance is not the desire itself, because it is normal to have desire. We should not be repressing desire. It's even positive to have desires in a, in a positive way. But these desires will help us to have a compass in our lives, so we know the desired direction to go. A life with tranquility will allow us to understand the desire and also make rational choices. The problem is when we are always trying to fulfill our desires without thinking about the consequences. This is when we're always having desires that are a little bit dangerous or bad for us, because if we don't know how to control our own desires, that can mean a little bit of a weakness of character. And that is why so many different philosophical schools, um, spiritual practices, um, recommend to have a life which is very simple with a lot of... Uh, um, restrictions, because then you can be cultivating your capacity to be uh, overcoming the inadequate desire. See, I'm not here suggesting that you have a life of many um, restrictions, that you be repressing your desires. Again, it is normal to have desires. What your personal development will do is to elevate your power of decision, conscious decision making. You're going to get to the point when you can consciously say that Although you want something, although you wish for something, although you have this desire, you have chosen not to. This is to get free from the prison of desire, to not be a slave of your own desire. So don't try to eliminate your desire. Use your desire as a constructive tool, as something to motivate you for life. Just don't be attached to be fulfilling every single desire that you have. That's even going to put you away from the present moment. So you can't have the life that you really want for you. There is always a choice. You are not obliged to do anything that you don't truly want. Unless, of course, in an unusual situation when somebody is threatening you in a life or death situation. If you believe that you have to do something that you don't want to, that is because you created a fantasy in your head. Maybe you have a scarcity story that has been repeated so many times in your mind that you start to truly believe it. The same thing happens in the opposite. If you say um, you can't do something, both in the situations of I have to do this or I can't do this, you are putting your focus of attention in scarcity instead of adding your focus in abundance. This is a little bit philosophical. Let me give you some examples so you understand. Maybe you have the story of I have to wake up early. You don't have to wake up early. You choose to wake up early. Do you see the difference? In the first story, I have to. I have to do this. I have to do that. I'm presenting myself as a victim. Vulnerable victim. Incapable victim. A victim without the capacity to choose. The victim does not have capacity to choose because they are being coerced to do what other people are telling them to do. As a consequence, the victim is not responsible for the result of their actions because it was not their choice. They had to. So it is so easy for the victim to be complaining because the life they have is not the result of their own choices. What we want is exactly the opposite. Understand, you are in control of your own life. You have the power to put on paper what you really want for your future. You have to start today to have conscious decisions to make these goals into reality. With this, at every obstacle that you face in your life, you're going to know how to make the best possibility, the best choice, the most rational choice from all the possible choices. When you understand that you are the creator of your own story, now you're going to have more responsibility for your own results. You can understand the importance of conscious decisions, of better decisions, decisions that are based on what you really want, and not 
just on your impulsive desires. There is also the myth of the system telling us to do what we don't want to. So whenever somebody says that you don't have to do anything that you don't really want, like in the case of this video, there is a little bit of resistance, isn't it? We quickly come to examples uh, in which the system is forcing us to do things that we don't want to. For example, you may say, yeah, yeah, nice talk, but I have to go to work. I have to. And I don't like my work, but I have to do it to pay my bills. I have to deal with these uh, unpleasant people because, you know, social conventions. I have to deal with these situations because there are so many, you know, forces, so much, so much pressure against me. This is how we are taught to be thinking. But the truth is that it's just a myth. Just another scarcity story that you probably heard so many times that now you take as truth. The good news is that you can change, replace that myth for an abundance story. You can unlearn these wrong lessons. You can start to tell yourself a new story in which your actions are based on what you really want, not what society is expecting of you. Let's imagine that you really, really hate your job because it's so bureaucratic, because you have this unpleasant boss, because you have these colleagues at work that are gossiping all the time. Then you say, I have to go and work that. You don't have to. You are free at any moment to quit. You are free to become unemployed. You are free to take an offer and go work somewhere else. You are free to open your own business. Maybe you can start saving some money and in parallel to the job that you hate, you start slowly to build your own business in parallel in the extra hours that you have in your life. In any case, notice, it is your choice to continue going to the job that you hate. You don't have to work. You are choosing to work and go to that job that you hate because there is going to be one day when that unpleasant situation about the type of work that you have or the unpleasant boss that you have or the colleagues at, at your work, this is going to be so unbearable that it will be your choice to quit and go to your new challenges of life. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Not everything is your choice. Maybe there will be one day in which you, you are going to your work and then, I don't know, maybe your company... Um, went bankrupt. Maybe your boss will decide to fire you before you even have the chance to quit. Maybe your gossiping colleagues will conspire a situation so which you are fired in an unfair way without being able to defend yourself. Maybe, I don't know, maybe an earthquake or an asteroid will fall on top of the company and then you go there and there's no company anymore. So, see, all these situations, they are part of life. There are situations in life in which we have little to no control at all. This is how life is. And when you learn to live in the present moment and take things as they are, you're going to be free from the false belief, from the false desire that if things would be different, maybe you would be happy. Today we talked about the subtle difference between what you desire impulsively and what you really want for your life. So there are four practical lessons from all of this that I really value a lot. The first lesson is to understand the consequences of our own choices. If you don't have conscience about the consequences of your choices, it's going to be really difficult for you to find balance and take you to your higher goals. The second lesson is that we don't want to be prisoners of our own desires. We also don't want to be exterminating our desires. We want to use our desires as a tool, as a positive force. The third lesson is that the best way to not be a slave of our own desires is just to change perspective. We can change the perspective of scarcity for a perspective of abundance. We can notice we have different types of choices, and every choice has different consequences. It is only making the choices that we can improve our desire. We can control our desire. We can sincerely say, I desire, but I don't want to. And the fourth lesson is that the only way to substitute the impulsive decisions for conscious decisions, conscious choices, is to be investing in your own personal development. It is knowing how to study, to plan, especially to observe your own mistakes, your errors, in a way to put yourself in control of your own life. And to get started, I suggest that you spend, for example, the next week 
paying attention in your language. Instead of saying, you can't do this, that you have to do that, explain to yourself what it is that you really want. Understand, remember, there is always a choice. You are not being forced to do anything that you don't really want. And by the way, if you really want to develop yourself more as a person, I recommend that you visit arata.se forward slash personal development to see a special lesson in how to achieve better choices in your life and improvements in your life, starting with yourself.